it's Millie and thank you guys for jumping into the nook. It's time for my first reading vlog of the year where I read all the sci-fi books. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It's the start of a brand new reading year and it's time to read some books. Okay, so my plan for January, as you guys saw from my January M&M TBR game, and if you haven't, it will be linked somewhere up here for you guys to check out. I am focusing on sci-fi this month. For some reason, I always attribute January with sci-fi. It's just the mood that I get, and I always want to read sci-fi books during this time. So that is what I'm going to do. Now, I put some sci-fi books on my TBR, but... In all honesty, there were way more books that I had planned to read, um, and I did give myself a small TBR on purpose just to reduce some of the pressure. But I have about six books that I want to read, so let's jump into everything I want to read for this reading vlog. Now, I would like to believe that this reading vlog is only going to take one or two weeks, but it's not. It's probably going to be the entire month, okay? Um, we're at the beginning of January now, so I definitely have plenty of time to read these books. But we shall see how it goes because I always have a plan at the beginning of the month and then it goes sideways very quickly. So essentially I was debating whether or not to make this two different reading vlogs. But I have a feeling um, based on the fact that some are physical and some are audiobook that it's not going to go the way I want if I split it into two. So it's better to just put everything in one giant video. So essentially I want to read three sci-fi books that are kind of out of my comfort zone and three sci-fi sequels to kind of determine if the originals were in my comfort zone. So you see how these were going to be two separate videos. Um, so I have four physical books and two are audiobooks. And since I tend to read audiobooks a little bit faster than physical books, it just makes sense that all of it is put together in one video. So I'm going to go first over the three out of comfort zone reads and then I'm going to go into the three sequels afterwards. So these are the three sci-fi books that are going to be considered my out of comfort zone read and two of these are actually on my January TBR. See what I did there? All right, so I'm going to go through each one individually, give you guys the briefest of synopsis and explain why I think it's out of my comfort zone and um, whether I think I'm going to enjoy it or not. All right, so the first book that I'm going to talk about is Battle of the Linguist Mages by Scott O'Moore. This one is not on my TBR, but it is going to be the first one out of all of the books that I read because this is actually a buddy read that I'm doing with a coworker of mine. So we decided that we were going to be reading this book over winter break. I have another week technically of winter break, even though I am working. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with this book first, <laughs> just because it's a buddy read. Um, but the reason why this one is a out of comfort zone read is that this one has to do with video games. And that's not usually something that I gravitate towards in books. Um, so we're going to see how I feel about it for this one. So as you guys can see from the title, it is Battle of the Linguist Mages. And so it's essentially this alternate universe where there's this like virtual reality game that is called Sparkle Dungeon <laughs> and it involves singing like singing spell casts and so the top player who's our main character basically gets like enlisted by this company who reveals to her that the spells in the video game are actually real and so then I guess it's a bunch of like wizards or mages that use linguistic magic to battle against each other. That's what I've gotten from the synopsis of the book, so we'll see how it goes. I, I'm gonna be really honest. Um, I'm not sure if this book is gonna be good. Uh, I have a feeling that it's not gonna be that good, but it might be enjoyable. And that's what I'm looking forward to, okay? This is about like quality of my enjoyment reading this book, not quality of the writing, okay? I just wanna have a good, silly, campy time with this book. So honestly, I can see it kind of going 50-50 on whether I end up actually liking it or not, or it might be a dud. It might be my first DNF of the year. We shall see. All right, second book is Goliath by Tochi Anabuchi. Um, so this one is a little bit of a shorter sci-fi standalone. Oh, all of the books that are in my out of comfort zone happen to be standalones. That's just a coincidence. Um, so for Goliath, it is, we're in the future, it is 2050. And basically everybody is leaving Earth to join these space colonies. Um, and this is about the people who are currently still on Earth who are unable to get out 
yet. And it all has to do with what kind of like the politics of the people who are able to leave to join these space colonies and the people that are left behind who are usually the ones who are oppressed in poverty. I know race has to do very much with this book. It's a central theme of it. And it, we're following different POVs of the people who are kind of left behind on Earth. That is pretty much all I know about this book. Um, the reason why it's a little bit of my like out of comfort zone read is because I have read from this author before. Um, he wrote Riot Baby and it was a novella that I read and I remember giving it like a three star because I thought it was really well written but I just kind of felt confused. I felt like <laughs> it was not a book for me. There was a lot of like symbolism behind it that I either couldn't appreciate or didn't understand that I just couldn't relate to and that's why it wasn't like affecting me or giving me this emotional reaction that I think I was supposed to have towards the book. Um, also there was just like a lot of anger with that book that I yeah I just it didn't sync with me and so I thought it was just kind of like a miss. So that's why I'm kind of hesitant going into it because I have read from this author before and the writing it, the book just didn't work for me and so I'm thinking that it might be kind of a similar thing and the book just kind of passes over my head. So that's why this one's kind of an out of comfort zone read. Um, I do like the dystopian aspect of it but um, yeah we'll see how it goes. And last but not least for the out of comfort zone reads we have Upgrade by Blake Crouch. Now Blake Crouch is a pretty popular sci-fi author. He writes a lot of sci-fi thrillers and while I have been, you know, getting into sci-fi and reading different subgenres of sci-fi, I've never read a sci-fi thriller before. I'm very intrigued, but also scared. This could either be something that I really enjoy or something that I completely hate. <laughs> and um, I don't know, there's something about this where it's like the author and the genre and the popularity, it just feels like a completely different camp of sci-fi that I've just never even thought to enter. It just, it feels like, like the popular kids at school, like I'm entering the popular table and I'm just like, no, I want to go hang out with the nerds and the drama geeks, please. And thank you. That's my comfort zone. Um, so that's what it kind of feels like. Like, I don't know. I feel like popular kids read this and I don't, I don't count. Um, but yeah, it's a sci-fi thriller has to do with this guy named Logan who works for essentially the FBI and he gets randomly selected as this person to get this upgrade and it basically makes him this superhuman and he's trying to figure out why he was chosen of all people and um, I guess kind of uncover more of the mysteries behind this genetic upgrade. So we'll see how it goes. All right, and now moving on to the sci-fi sequels. So first one we have is Ocean's Echo by Avrina Maxwell. Now this is kind of a sequel, and it's kind of a standalone. It's basically a companion novel, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to label it a sequel. All right, so essentially Ocean's Echo takes place in the same universe as Winter's Orbit, which is this author's debut novel. Um, I'm not 100% sure if these characters appeared in the first book or not. I said they did in one of my videos and then I said they didn't in a different video. So I contradicted myself and I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what the correct answer is, but I will once I read this book. Um, essentially, it's two characters. I'm trying to remember this plot. Okay, it's essentially two characters and one of them has this like reader abilities where they can read minds, but they're basically um, conscripted into the military and they're placed under the care of this other lieutenant and um, a little romance sparks between these two male protagonists um, and a bunch of government conspiracies. If it's anything like the first book in this universe, then it's going to be a very heavy political sci-fi, very kind of slow burn romance, and a lot of angst, which I'm here for. And I think I will enjoy considering I gave the other book four stars. And now moving on to the other two books, these ones I'm going to be reading both of them as audiobooks and so I do not have physical copies, but the first one we're going to talk about is Prime Deceptions by Valerie Valdez. So this is the sequel to Chilling Effect, which was one of my favorite, it was my favorite sci-fi book of last year and one of my overall favorite books that I read last year. It is so campy and it's just a space opera, but it's also just quirky and weird and laugh out loud funny and it has this wonderful kind of like Latino based cast 
and I absolutely love the first book so much. And as much as I would love a physical copy of this book, I know that I enjoy it the best when it's an audiobook format because the narrator is so good and um, Eva Inocente, the captain, uses a lot of Cuban Spanish in her dialogue and you need to hear it. You need to hear the sass audibly as part of the experience, okay? There's no other way to put it. So I'm going to be reading the sequel, which is Prime Deceptions, for this trilogy and I am so excited! All right, and officially, last but not least, I'm going to be reading another sci-fi novella. So I'm going to be reading Exit Strategy by Martha Wells. This is the fourth book in the Murderbot Diaries. So I am trudging along in the Murderbot Diaries. It is another sequel, and I'm really excited to continue reading about Murderbot, our IA robot who has autonomy and pretends he doesn't because he wants to avoid humans. And I can relate. So it's another one of his stories. I believe book one through four is like its own arc and then five through nine is a second arc in the series. And so with this being the fourth book we are kind of finishing the first arc and Murderbot is reuniting with the humans that he met from the first book and I guess it's going to be kind of concluding a bunch of the government conspiracies that are going on in this book series. This is a novella, so it's only about a four hour audiobook. So this is definitely going to be a quick read, but I'm excited to get to it. So I will let you guys know how all of this goes as I read these six books. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be starting off with Battle of the Linguist Mages first, but I'm also going to probably be listening to an audiobook, which is either going to be Prime Deceptions or Exit Strategy. So we'll see how it goes and I'll keep you guys updated all month long. Hi guys! Um, so it's been a couple days now and I want to give you guys a brief update on the sci-fi books that I am reading. So uh, starting off we have Battle of the Linguist Mages, which at this point I am 50 pages into the book. I have um, spaced out all the different parts here and um, I started this book on the first day of the month and I have found that it's really difficult to pick up. Um, the book is like I predicted, um, not one that I would genuinely enjoy because as a reviewer accurately put it, it is basically all the woke part of Twitter in a book. <laughs> um, it is it is very pretentious. The main character is insufferable. Um, she is kind of like that really bad stereotype of a gamer girl who is really good at what she does, but she makes that her entire personality. And she's basically like this tough and bold keyboard warrior, but in real life, she's just like a completely antisocial person who does not even bother trying to make connections really with other people and just kind of comes off as like, oh, I'm so good. I'm so amazing. Like, look at me. Um, <laughs> so I'm really not vibing with the main character. I don't know if she's supposed to be likable or unlikable, but I'm not a huge fan of her. Um, in terms of the plot, we're basically at the point where we have this company that is trying to poach her and um, have her do like this test run for the fifth version of the game, which is beautifully titled Sparkle Dungeon. <laughs> this book is so ridiculous. And it's like, there's certain lines that I, I'm really enjoying. Like there's certain moments where I'm enjoying the book where I just think it's like funny, <laughs> not in a good way, but like I'm making fun of the book kind of way. And then there's some moments where I'm just like, this is too ridiculous. Um, and I am finding that I am skimming a little bit when it comes to um, the very specific details of the video game itself, because I quite frankly just don't care. Um, so we're gonna see <laughs> how it goes reading this book. Um, yeah. <laughs> but in this time I have started and finish one of the books, which is Exit Strategy by Martha Wells. So I had a feeling that I was going to get to one of the audiobooks and possibly finish it first, and with it being the four-hour novella, it made a lot of sense. So Exit Strategy, we're following our favorite character, Murderbot, and he's reuniting with the scientists that he saved from book one. He's been on his own little solo journeys in book two and book three, and he's brought forth a lot of evidence towards these conspiracy theories that are happening in the universe, and he is bringing them as proof for his scientists and um, also going on a rescue mission. So I really ended up enjoying the fourth book. My favorite is book one by far. I absolutely love book one. Book two was okay and book three was okay. Um, 
it went from five stars to 4.5 to four stars and now we're back to 4.5 and i realized that part of the reasons why i like book one and book four more in this series is that i really like murderbot's interactions with this very specific group of scientists that he saves in the first book i like the different um relationships that he has with the different people because some he's kind of like close to you know to the best of his abilities and some it's like straight up animosity and some it's just like careful like curiosity or interest and it's they're like the found family that he doesn't realize that he has like they know that they're a found family but he doesn't <laughs> and so I really like that dynamic and I was missing it from the second and third book what I do like from the second and third book is that he does meet other AI characters that also have their own quirky personalities and I really like that. I just didn't really like the plot points of the solo missions and so if we could somehow merge that together for the second arc where we have the quirky AI side characters and this found family group of scientists, if we can combined both of those elements in the rest of the books I think it's going to be a solid series for me but I really did enjoy this fourth book and I'm happy that I read it and um it's my second book <laughs> of January 2023 and the first book that I read was a mood read so so now I'm trying to figure out what book I'm going to read next. So I definitely want to have another physical book on hand because with Battle of the Linguist Mages, I haven't picked up that book in a couple of days and I don't want to get into a reading slump just because I can't pick up the book. So I'll just pick it up whenever I feel like it, but I'm going to move on and read some other books because I have many things that I want to read this month. So I think the next physical book that I'm going to pick up is Upgrade by Blake Crouch, which is a sci-fi thriller. And we're following this guy, Logan Ramsey, who works for the GPA, which is the Genetics Protections Agency. We're in this like futuristic alternate universe where there was a lot of genetic um, terrorist attacks where people are like illegally um, changing people's genetic codes. And so they have their own like separate FBI agency that's in charge of basically finding all of these criminals who deal with genetics, like illegal genetics. Um, and so he's an agent and he has this very kind of like dark past where his mom was a famous figure, but we don't know why yet. I've started the first like two chapters. She's a really famous figure, but we don't know why yet. And he gets caught up in this raid where um, he gets exposed to this like genetic component that changes him and essentially gives him an upgrade. And so he's trying to figure out who left behind um, this upgrade and if he was a purposeful target or just kind of like an unfortunate side effect of this scientific experience, ex like experiment gone wrong. Um, and slowly he is changing genetically. He is finding himself that he's able to like think smarter, think faster, think quicker, retain everything and just basically become this superhuman with all of these amazing qualities that makes him kind of like the perfect human being. Um, so far I'm liking it and I'm glad that I picked this one up as like my next physical read because it's definitely caught my attention so yeah i'm really liking this one so far and for my audiobook i'm going to be starting prime deceptions by valerie valdez which is our campy sci-fi opera book and i'm very very excited for it we're going to be following um captain ava innocente as she and her group um decide to kind of work like pseudo work for the forge which is this um, organization that's fighting against the fridge which are the big baddies um, in this universe and yeah they're basically going on all of these like side missions for these two factors that are competing against each other and uh, they're looking for the scientist who is the older brother of one of the newest crew members um, in Ava's space crew so we're gonna see how it goes um, I haven't started that one but I'm gonna be starting it tomorrow at work so I am excited to get through it and uh, yeah, so far sci-fi books are going pretty good. Hey guys. All right The lighting is kind of blown out. So I either look like my highlighter is popping or it's sweat So we're gonna pretend it's highlighter <laughs> um, So I wanted to give you guys a really quick update tonight because I've been continuing to read some more of upgrade by Blake Crouch And I have thoughts. All right, so I'm already on page 130 for this book um, I have been reading it for the last like two hours and this has been such like an easy quick book to read 
and I'm actually finding myself really really enjoying it and I think it definitely has to do with the fact that it is a thriller and so it is fast-paced in, in nature um, but it really feels like the type of movie that I would watch on Netflix. My husband really watches only like action movies and so I'm kind of picky with the ones that I watch because I don't like a lot of like the gory violent ones but I love a lot of like the fast action paced ones um for lack of a better example like the fast and furious movies are kind of like my style my vibe and so i can definitely see this being like a netflix action movie and me watching it and really enjoying it so we're following logan who is our main character who has gone through this upgrade that basically makes him this superhuman and we find out a little bit more about his past his mother was a famous scientist and she created this kind of um like genetic component to help these crops and she unleashed it in the Philippines and it ended up backfiring completely and caused um, this global event called the Great Starvation and so many people tragically died from this and it really changed the way that people um, were able to grow crops and things like that and it affected everything and she took her own life um, and he went to prison because he was part of this um, like genetic experimentation that shouldn't have happened even though he was like a young boy he was like 20 years old he was in college he was doing a summer internship with his mother and he just kind of got caught up in everything and ended up going to prison um so when he gets out of prison he gets offered this job in the gpa and despite the fact that he's a criminal they kind of view the fact that he could understand the type of people that they're trying to capture and they can tell that he's trying to atone for what his mom did and what he got, in a, got caught up in by accident and so he would make the perfect field agent for this um, and so now that he's gone through this upgrade he's trying to figure out who from his past is trying to target him um, was it purposeful and kind of figuring out all these different clues and so far it's just been really gripping and moving and I'm absolutely loving this. This is the type of book that I can easily see myself reading in one sitting. Um, I'm not going to because I have some other work to do tonight, but I can definitely finish this in a couple of days and I'm so far really enjoying it and I'm surprised that I'm enjoying it as much as I am. Uh, right now it's reading like a 4 or 4.5, so depending on how the rest of the book goes, I can easily see this being like a new sci-fi favorite for me, which is weird to say, but yeah, I'm glad I'm enjoying it. Hey everybody, just wanted to give you guys a quick little sci-fi reading update. So at this point we are starting the third week of January, so we have passed the halfway mark of the month. Um, things are moving along a little bit slower than I had imagined for some of the books, um, but it mainly has to do with the fact that I have just been feeling um, really slumpy in my personal life. Um, work for me has just kind of kicked into overgear and so I've just had so much on my mind in regards to that that when I come home I just don't even have the energy to film or read and so my reading has been a little bit slower than I had initially predicted it was going to go but I'm still trudging along so let me tell you guys what I've been up to. So first off, I did finish a book. I finished Prime Deceptions by Valerie Valdez, um, which is the second book in the Chilling Effect um, trilogy. And I love this one. It was so great. I'm giving it 4.5 stars. Um, it was just equally as campy as the first one. But what I liked with it being a sequel is that we did get to see some growth, especially with Ava Innocente, who's our main character, and we're just following her POV throughout the entire story. I really like that we did able to see kind of that emotional and maturity growth from her. She was a little bit immature in the first book. Um, she's genuinely just kind of like a very <laughs> kind of selfish, kind of wild child type of character who, you know, has her own sets of morals and beliefs, but also likes to be the rebel as much as she can. Um, and she's just focused really like on her and her close knit family and not really focused on anybody else. Um, and one of the big things from the first book is that she had a really bad habit, which I often see in like captain type characters in fantasy and sci-fi books, is that she made a lot of decisions for her team and kept a lot of secrets from her team, which later when it's revealed causes a lot of resentment between her and her crew members because they feel like they can't trust her. 
and that was definitely evident in the first book. Um, she had all good intentions when she was keeping things from them um, because she felt like she was trying to protect them, but it just really, for them, it felt like a lack of respect, like that she couldn't trust them um, and let them come to their own decisions. So like, for example, she would get um, a case or like a specific job and looking at all of the details surrounding it, she's like, mm, no, this sounds kind of sketchy. This is like a scam. I'm gonna say no, our team is not gonna go ahead and do that job. But um, now you can kind of see that growth because she's realizing like all of her actions from the first book that she really needs to, you know, have this open discussion with her crew members. And so if a job comes up like that where she's just like, I automatically wanna say no or say yes, but she'll always answer now, I have to talk to my crew first before we make a decision. I'll get back to you. And for me, that shows so much like maturity and growth that she actually learned from all of the things that she was doing wrong and problematic from the first book and she's like now doing them correctly in the second book. Um, I also like the fact that we got more of like the emotional backstory for Ava. She goes through this incident that's kind of alluded to in the first book where she did a lot of things that she regrets, um, like really serious terrible things and it's kind of like a little foggy if she knew exactly how bad <laughs> she was behaving at the time or if she like did stuff and then realized the consequences later of like how bad it really was. But it's kind of alluded in the first book and in the second book we kind of get taken back there because she's kind of forced to face her demons, uh, for lack of a better word, because of the quest to rescue the older brother of her latest crew member and it takes them back to the planet where all of her trauma started and she has to face it head on with her crew. So I really liked the direction of the second book. I really liked how it ended and you're kind of like, you can see the setup for the third book. I'm really sad that it's only a trilogy and we don't get more from this series, but it's also very episodic. And so I do understand how this first arc can kind of close, but there's definitely probably gonna be room for more shenanigans in the future. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed reading this book. So talking about some other books that I'm in the middle of, I have made it to page 270 of Upgrade. Now this one is roughly only about like, I think 325 or 350. So I'm really close to the end. Um, and honestly, <laughs> I started this book like over a week ago. I honestly could have read it in like one, two days max. But every time I pick up the book, I've been enjoying it. But something else prompts me to put the book down. Like I have to go do something or I have an appointment or I'm getting tired so I have to put the book down but I want to continue reading it because I am really enjoying the thriller aspect of this book. Um, and I didn't realize that there was like a two-parter and so there's actually a one year later <laughs> for the second part of the book and so it slowed down just a little bit but it made sense because you were kind of given the background context of all the events that happened to our main character in that one year gap. Um, but now it's kicking it back into gear. We're getting really into like the juicy action of it. So I'm really hoping to finish this one soon. I really want to um, because I am genuinely enjoying this book. Okay, so unfortunately we have to talk about some books that I'm not really enjoying as much. So Battle of the Linguist Mages, I started this book on day one of January, the first day of the year, first book of the month. I'm still on page 50. I have not bothered to pick up this book. I don't want to DNF it because I really want to do the buddy read with my coworker and she is kind of waiting for me to like catch up with her and so I feel really bad. Um, I've just had like zero motivation to pick up this book but my goal is that I want to either finish this book or officially DNF it by the end of this week because I don't want to carry this book for that much longer. Like if I'm not gonna enjoy it, I'm not gonna enjoy it and that's it, but I also need to make a decision. So I do wanna give it a little bit more, like I didn't even get to the end of part one, which I really want to do, um, to at least like kind of make up my mind if I wanna DNF it or not. So we'll give this one some more tries. And a book that I am actually going to do a temporary DNF on is Goliath by Tochi Anabuchi. So I actually started this one this morning um, I was listening to it as an audiobook because I was at work and so I couldn't read it physically. I got through about like 5% of the audiobook and decided to not continue reading the book. I feel like I will not appreciate this book. It, it, I'm getting the exact same vibes of when I started reading Riot Baby where I'm just like, I feel like because this book is so heavy on the politics and the race and a very... <laughs> Benji! Brownie! 
much. So I feel like this book has a really important message behind it. And I feel like the way that people have been describing it based on the reviews, it's very dense. It does not hold your hand. It does not shy away from talking about really heavy topics that involve politics and race and oppression. And the big takeaway from this book, based on the reviews that I've seen, is that a lot of people have commented, this book doesn't really have a story. It's a bunch of different perspectives. It's a bunch of different snapshots of their lives. So you're kind of getting like this full picture from a bunch of people in different um, aspects of society and just kind of seeing a well like a well-rounded picture of this dystopian world and how these themes are handled poorly, which I appreciate. But I think what's going to end up happening is that I'm going to read this book because I want to appreciate it but I'm going to be bored because there's no story to follow. Therefore, I feel like I'm going to rate this lower than it would actually deserve, if that makes sense. So I don't know how you guys feel about my decision, but I don't want to read this book because I don't want to rate it badly. And I have a feeling that I'm just, I'm not going to enjoy it that much. I do like Afrofuturistic books like um, Binti by Nandi Okrafor um, and I do like The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin that are both Afrofuturistic that deal with race and oppression and have like these really hard heavy topics to follow um, but there's a story and there's these characters these heroes to root for and I think that I'm going to miss that from this book and not like it and so I also just don't want to spend time reading a book that I don't think I'm going to like, which honestly goes the same for Battle of the Linguist Mages, which is pretty high possibility of me DNFing at this point. Um, but yeah, 2023 is about enjoying my reading, being less stressful, and it's okay to DNF books. It's just not for me. So I'm most likely going to just do a temporary DNF. I'm going to have it on my shelves just in case I decide to pick it up later this year but if I haven't picked it up by the end of the year it might be a book that I end up on hauling at the end of 2023. Okay so I've at least started I think all of the sci-fi books oh except for Winter's Echo that's the only sci-fi book from my TBR that I have not started yet which I do want to but there's so many other books I want to get to this month and uh we'll see how it goes. I'm still trudging along and uh yeah I'll let you guys know how it goes. Hey guys, so I wanted to give you guys a quick update because I did finish Upgrade, but before I get into that, I wanted to show you guys my new nails. They're this beautiful like ballerina pink baby color with sparkles and yes, I purposely brought this sweater to the nail salon so that my nails matched my sweater. <sighs> I'm, I'm obsessed, so I wanted to come and share that first. Um, and yes, I finished Upgrade by Blake Crouch, and I am giving this one four stars. So I, it's a low four stars, but it's a four stars nonetheless. Also, this new thing that I was thinking about coming into this year is that there was like something about my star rating system that was like, wasn't bothering me necessarily. It was just, I felt like I needed to tweak it a little bit. So I decided that for the purposes of me reviewing the books to you guys on my channel, that I would actually just fully use the Culpile rating system that was created by G from Book Roast. Um, but simultaneously, I would also convert it to the regular, like, you know, 3, 3.5, 4 stars that you usually see, um, so that I can put it onto Goodreads. And so I'm going to be kind of keeping two ratings for each book that I read for this year. And I kind of want to see how that goes, because I feel like the 1 through 5 is almost a little bit too limiting versus the call pile system is one through 10. And so that kind of gives you a little bit more kind of variety in how you rate because not all four stars are the same. So like, even though I would give this one a four stars, it's a completely different reading experience from um, some other books that I would consider four stars. So that's just something that I'm going to consider doing for this year and see kind of how that goes. So because of that, the Culpaw rating system for this one is a 7.4, which I feel like is a pretty accurate representation of my feelings with this book. It's a pretty good solid read. Um, so, am, <laughs> so my only thing that I would change with this whole reading experience for this book in particular is I have learned that I need to consume mysteries and thrillers 
a lot quicker. Like these are not slow burns, slow reads over a period of time that I just kind of pick up when I'm in the mood for it. It's like, no, I need to consume these books in like a day or two. Like this is the kind of book I read during a like 48 hour readathon or a reading sprint because part of the enjoyment is just like being there in the moment and just consuming it with like the fast pace. Um, unless it's one of those mysteries that are like really slow and cozy. But with this book, I feel like the first couple days that I was reading it, I was enjoying it so much. And then I took like a six day break before I picked up this book again. And I could tell that that was too long of a break because I didn't have the same like enthusiasm for the book when I picked it up after my break. So definitely kind of regret um, giving it too long of a break. Um, but I really liked this book and I actually really liked the writing style for this. So one of the things about this writing style is, yes, it's very scientific. There was a lot of science specifically about DNA um, and kind of like the manipulations of DNA and things like that because that was the main topic of this. And a lot of the characters in this book were experts in that field. And so there was a lot of jargon, a lot of vocab that I was like, ooh, did I learn this in, in biology in high school? Um, so there were some parts where I got a little bit too scientific and I'm gonna be honest my eyes kind of glazed over those parts a little bit um, but what I did like was that with the upgrade being something that kind of enhances the human and almost makes them like this superhuman that's just able to process things faster and better as the main character is going through this upgrade throughout the book his thoughts are getting faster and the way he's handling things go a lot faster and that was kind of mimicked with the pacing of this book. In the beginning he was like an easy chill going guy and you kind of got that kind of leisurely pace as it's dipping you into the kind of mystery elements of this thriller and as things were going on as the action was increasing everything was increasing the pace was there the tension was there um, all of the conflict and then as his mind was racing the writing pacing was getting faster and faster and faster and so I kind of liked that mirrored the writing style with what was kind of happening in the book so I really did enjoy that. I think one of the big cute like takeaways that I took from this experience is that A, I do like sci-fi thrillers which was a subgenre that I wasn't sure I was going to like or not and B, I definitely want to read some more from Blake Crouch, which I honestly, I didn't think I would like his style for some reason. I just, I didn't think that his books would vibe for me, um, but they do. So I think I want to pick up his other two really popular books, Dark Matter and Recursion, maybe at some point later this year when I'm kind of in the mood for another sci-fi thriller to kind of mix up all of my like heavy grimdark fantasies and smutty romances. Um, but yeah, this was a really good reading experience and I'm glad that I enjoyed this book. Okay, so have I made any progress on Battle of the Linguist Mages? No, not at all. My goal, because it's Friday evening, is that I want to finish this book by the end of this weekend. That's right, this is like a 450 page book. I want to finish it this weekend. I want to only focus on this book. I don't want to read anything else. I just want to focus on this book, get through it, <laughs> power through, and finally finish it. That's my plan. Now, the only book that I haven't got to yet is Ocean's Echo by Everina Maxwell, and I'm kind of worried of whether or not I'll get to this book because I do plan on starting Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson on Monday and starting a completely different reading vlog. So I might pick it up and include my thoughts in this vlog, or I might decide that um, I might have to cut the loss and not read it this month. I'm kind of 50-50 on that decision, so I will let you guys know what I decide. Hey guys, so I'm here to give you guys an update on Battle of the Linguist Mages and um, to cut to the chase, I'm DNFing this book. Not even a temporary DNF, a flat out DNF. Like I got to page 190 and I have officially decided that I am not going to continue reading this book. Um, so I didn't really have high expectations for this book but I wanted to at least be enjoyable like, even if it's bad, at least be kind of, like, funny, enjoyable. But this was the first book that I started this month. We have four days left of the month, and, like, it's been a struggle trying to get through this book. I just have no motivation to pick it up. I don't want to continue reading it. 
so why force myself? So I felt bad because I had brought up the idea of reading this book with my coworker. We both bought the books. We were trying to do our first like book club together. And so I was like, I need to read this for her since I kind of like convinced her to buy this book with me. Um, and so we talked about it <laughs> earlier this week at work and we're both kind of like, um, neither of us want to finish reading this book. We don't like it served its purpose. We read, we were slightly entertained and it's like, mm, we're done with this book. We want to move on and read something else. Um, and she got to page 250. So like kudos to her. Um, but yeah, this book is just exhausting. Like I got to page a hundred and I thought, I sincerely thought that I had read 600 pages. Like, and these chapters are so short and there's so much that's going on with the plot. And so like, it is very fast paced, but it's also just such a ridiculous plot and I cannot get behind it. <laughs> it's just so bad. I'm not even a hundred percent sure if I ever told you guys what this book was about. I still don't even know if I know what this book is about. Essentially we're following our main character, Isabel, who's the queen of the sparkle dungeon, which is this really, really popular video game. That's like a hybrid of like League of Legends and also karaoke and it's also virtual reality. And so she's the top player for four games in a row and the fifth one is about to come out and she gets this job opportunity to work at the company that makes this game to kind of work with like their beta testing, but it turns out they're not testing for the game. They've discovered these power morphemes, which are essentially like another language and when you speak it out loud in certain words and certain sentences, you make magic happen. And so different things can happen. And so she's training to basically have this control, but the company is using it for marketing purposes in order to convince people to do what they want. And they're somehow backed by this church, which is basically Scientology. And then she gets pulled into the resistance that's trying to combat this company but there's also aliens <laughs> and it's just so weird this is such a weird book um and it's just really really not enjoyable <laughs> at all and i'm sorry i wanted to like get to the end of this book but i can't i just can't so it is going back on my shelves and i'm most likely going to unhaul it at the end of the year but i am really happy to be putting this book away and that I, I'm not reading it anymore, honestly. It's like a huge sense of relief. So now I can move on with my life. Okay, so I actually started five out of the six books that I said I was going to read for this reading vlog. The only one that I did not get to was Ocean's Echo by Everina Maxwell. And it's very unfortunate because this one is on my January TBR and I only have four books on that TBR. So I really thought I was gonna be able to finish it. But at this point in time of when I am filming, I have, I want to say I've started nine books and I think I'm going to end the reading month with at least seven or eight that are finished. So I did read a lot this month and I did read a lot of sci-fi. I just didn't get to one of the books that was on my TBR. Um, I technically could like at least start this book and get through it since I do have a couple more days of the month. But Warbreaker is also on that TVR and I have not started that book. And so basically it's like, do I start Warbreaker or do I start Ocean's Echo? And considering I've spent the entire month reading sci-fi, I kind of want a break from sci-fi. And so I'm going to pick up Warbreaker because it is adult fantasy. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close off this reading vlog um, because I did get through a lot of sci-fi books this month. Now these are all the physical books that I was planning on reading. And these two were on my TBR. So I didn't get to this one. I did manage to read Upgrade. Um, and this one was one of the ones that was on my out of comfort zone reads. And this one ended up being a huge success at four stars as a sci-fi mystery thriller. And I really enjoyed it. Goliath, unfortunately, is a temporary DNF. I might pick it up later in the year. But as of now, it was not really interesting me. And so I wanted to put it aside. Battle of the Linguist Mages is a DNF <laughs> straight and through not picking up that book again 
So the other two books that I did read were um, Prime Deceptions by Valerie Valdez, which I ended up giving 4.52, and that one was a huge success as another sequel that I really enjoy, as well as Exit Strategy by Martha Wells, which is the fourth book in the Murderbot Diaries. That one I also gave 4.52, and so the audiobooks did really good, and so far the sequels did really good, so it makes me even more regretful that I didn't get to Ocean's Echo, because maybe all the sequels would have done really well. In terms of my out of comfort zone reads, like Upgrade was the success, but Battle of the Linguist Mages and Goliath just did not pull through. So did the experiment kind of worked in the way that I thought it would? I guess it did. <laughs> Alright guys, that is all for now. I did have a lot of fun getting through a lot of sci-fi books this month and just starting off the year with a lot of sci-fi, which I have discovered is a genre that I do truly, truly enjoy. Um, but I am definitely in the mood to be picking up some more romance and fantasy. Definitely in the mood for both of those genres. So you guys are going to be seeing a lot of that in February. Um, but sci-fi was good this month. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a likes and a thumbs up. Comment down below if you guys have read any of the six books I mentioned in this reading vlog and what were your thoughts on them. And as always, if you guys are enjoying my bookish content, please be sure to subscribe for some more. I'm Millie. Thank you guys for jumping into the nook. Bye!